Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome to the next part of building our front deck. In this episode, we finish the front deck. If you missed part one of this project, there's a link to the full video down below. But if you don't really want the full nitty gritty details, stay tuned. There's about a 10 to 20 second elevator pitch catch up scene, and then we'll jump into the working today. So at this point we are finished with the framing and how we are doing our deck, we being Sam. We are going to go ahead and put the deck boards on next, so let's go to it. What I'm about to say applies to us in our area and it may or may not apply to you, so take it with a grain of salt. Where we live, it is not allowable to attach a deck to a mobile home or a manufactured home. We are not allowed to frame this deck up as if it was a stick built home, attaching a ledger board to the house and then floating out to some posts out into the yard. The reason for that is with mobile or manufactured homes, you inherently will have settling effects. And if you attach your deck to your home and either one of those two start to settle, you run the risk of pulling apart your ledger board and your deck collapsing. That being said, if you drive down the road, you're going to see probably almost every home has not followed that rule or has deviated or just decided, you know what? I'm done, I've had my inspections, we're in the home, now I can do whatever I want to. We don't have that luxury since we do still need to have our county inspectors come out, inspect the home, the porches, the decks, the plumbing, the electricity, everything, before we're allowed to get our certificate of occupancy, or CO, to then get power turned on and move into our home legally. I won't say I'll never do something like that, but for now, this is what I'm doing and the reason I'm doing it this way. Straight up, just like that. There you go. There you go. Woo. <laughs> Another benefit of a deck of this design sitting on top of the beams is it allows us to square the framing of the deck up to the home. Say, for example, we might be off a little bit, not perfectly parallel with our beams to each other or to the home. We have a little bit of freedom with the beams being longer to square it up, make it look great, and then flush trim everything in the end and it looks perfect. It's a very forgiving deck design and it's one that is very easy to wrap your head around as a homeowner or DIYer and one that honestly I like. It's very common out here. In fact, I believe Dex.com, maybe Lowe's or Home Depot, almost all of them when you do a deck designer online, 
are using this kind of technique for freestanding decks. And I can totally see why. It's good use of materials, you're not overkill on things, you don't have any complex joinery, you're not notching posts, doing that kind of stuff, and it's really easy to do. We have reached that wonderful point where it's time to trim and cut the ends of this deck so it doesn't look so ragged. I have measured the underside or the overhang of all the deck boards. Okay, not all of them, about like four. Every so often along the length of the deck. I put pencil marks on the top. I'm gonna to connect the lines with my level and then we'll zip them off with a circular saw to give us a nice crisp flush cut that looks beautiful. That's the plan at least. Hey, hon. Yeah? Can you explain to everybody why we have all this cardboard trash? It's because uh, when we did a finish grade of the house, we made it look really awesome and great. And it's a mud slick whenever it's wet. So we have the cardboard brick road. It's not yellow brick, it's cardboard. And it allows us to walk, sometimes slip and slide and scream if it's slippery, but we get from the house to the driveway without getting everything super muddy. You're also going to notice a bunch of our wood offcuts are in place. Isaac was playing the floor is lava or the front yard is lava. So that's what that is too. It's part of the fun having kids. It is fun. It is memories. You just got to be careful because if you don't know they're down there, you could trip and die. So they're having fun and they're trying to kill you all at the same time. It is amazing being a parent. It's just amazing. Poor saw no. hates. It hates. Why did I ever get purchased for these people? They've abused me. I'm, I'm consumer grade. Don't they know it? <laughs> well, the battery says it's got two bars left, but it's hot. So let's see if we can find another one that's halfway dead. Got another two bar here. It's not like melting. Hot as magma. <laughs> Let's try this again. The board might be pinching the blade. At this point, how you cut off this extra board is you take a chunk out of your house wall. And no, I'm just joking. Where's our oscillating tool? Okay, pause. I want to I want to address some some people out there who's probably laughing or saying, Sam, why are you sawing the saw? Because the saw is saws itself, right? Not so. When you are dealing with thicker materials, this oscillating blade only moves a small little bit. If you don't manually clear out chips, you're not going to make any headway. So when you see people manually saw with a power saw, I'm going to say they're smart people and they know what they're doing. At least that's what I'm doing. And that's why you see me kind of wiggle, 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 is to get the chips and sawdust out of the middle to allow the blade to work, not get overheated, and just be quicker overall. All right, let's go back.
What I'm doing here is using the pieces of reed bar as grade pins. I drive them down so that they're exactly as high as I need the final grade of the concrete slab to be in the end. This allows us to use the pins as our reference point and move the steps out of the way to pour and finish the concrete slab. This is a trick I picked up by watching, I believe, Perkins Building Your Brothers. It's another YouTube channel. They were using this with footers for a home, but it's something that I saw and stuck with me and decided to use it here in this case. I feel like it worked out pretty good. I don't know if I'll use it again for our back deck, but it is a technique that was easy to wrap my head around. Not being someone who is a concreteologist, not being a professional mason, I haven't really done that much concrete. But seeing how they did the footers allowed me to realize, okay, this is how I can get a level uniform base. All right, Sam's gears are meshing with this and he can probably make this happen. for shoveling. After this, I'll, I'll start floating it so don't hit it with the rake. I know this will be good. Okay. You can do it. He took away my float. He took my toys away. Alright, there we go. Oh my gosh, let's get out of this heat.
Alright, so I should be able to just tap this wood a little bit and it come off. Just you don't want to miss. Looking good. Wait, guess what I found? What did you find? It's a metal thing. And then you put it right here.
got our first deck or stair board in place. I'm doing a one inch overhang wider than the stringers. So I'm popping that into place there. And now I want to show you how I'm going to figure out the notch. So I got my overhang set. I'm just going to kind of line it up here, put a pencil mark. Now I'm going to move the board into place. I got to prop it up down there because it's longer than this width. And then I'll just make a little pencil line here. I'm giving myself about an eighth inch wiggle room on both sides. That way it's one cut and you're done. So now I'll mark this out, cut it out, and we'll go to fit it in place and have our nice notch flush up to the deck and still have our one inch overhang to continue down the stairs. Let me drag these out. You can hold the ends because there's concrete bags on the other yep. end of these boards. Mm. Just gonna lay it down on that block. Put that on the end. Got it? Yep. Okay. Cut these, you can go sit them on the steps if you want to. You can walk up in the middle as long as you're careful, whatever you're comfortable with. You guys want to help put the decking on? Let me do these that have been notched. They're very, very fragile. Over here. Ta -da! <laughs> That's nice. Oh yeah, my side of the stairs. You know, gonna be crowding my style or cramping my style. I mean, I think all four of us could come up and down the stairs together. Yeah. You could do. Nice. 
We're ready to go ahead and start working on building our deck railings, handrail, and balusters. We've got some pretty cool little brackets that go on the ends of the 2x4s for the railings. First time we're ever using those, but I think it'll look really nice. And the black accent of these brackets will match and kind of tie in with the black lag screws we've used for attaching the posts. So, let's get our stuff together, cut some boards, and throw it up there. Right? Yeah. These look nice, don't they? They really do. It's just an, enough little bit of color and accent to really make it look good. Do we have to put a top on it? No, we're not going to. Okay. No, to, okay, to meet the code for handrail, we can't put a top. It has to be this. Okay. Which is fine, because this will look nice and clean. It's less material as well. Yeah. And you know those two by six top rails always get super splintery and junk, so. True, very true. Yeah, it works. It looks very nice, very nice.
As promised, here is a little bit of chat session about our front deck here. A lot of people asked in the first part of the video, said, hey, why didn't you just make your deck eight by eight? Why are you taking eight foot long lumber? Why are you cutting it up and wasting so much material? The reason we chose to do a seven by seven is to give us a literal foot to burn or to choose to selectively waste. These deck boards, not the greatest. Actually, most of the lumber, not the greatest. It's from a hardware store, big box store, Home Depot, Lowe's, they're all about the same quality. Having that foot on most all boards to allow us to pick and choose was handy because it allowed us to pick and choose. Imagine that. It did. It allowed us to pick the prettier boards, cut off any kind of ends. A lot of the times on lumber, the, the ends are about two inches or so are cracked. Mm -hmm. So you've got problems there. So that is the reason why, even though we had eight foot lumber, we chose to make this seven foot, roughly seven foot dimension overall. So real time, we've had the front deck finished, I think about a week now. Mm -hmm. It's given time for us to see it as we drive in and leave the property and use it as we go in and out of the house. And I have no regrets. I don't want to change anything about it. No, me either. Uh, some people asked about putting a roof on it or we're going to do a roof we're not going to do anything like that for i mean the near future before we do any kind of roof structure on a porch or build a larger one or anything we've got some siding work to do at the house and if you remember from whenever we moved our home here we had to cut the roof edge there's a little bit of cleanup work there as well that i would want to do before i attached any kind of roof Again, the goal is for us to get into our house as soon as possible as well. So adding the extra cost and materials to put a roof on this is something that we didn't want to do. In addition, I don't know exactly how particular county inspectors would be about an attached roof, attaching the roof to the house, although the deck is freestanding. I just don't want to get in those waters with an inspector. So doing this, leaving this, we're happy and they better be happy. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> we followed their rules to a T and even more so hopefully we won't have any issues when that day comes <laughs> well guys thanks for coming along as we finished up our deck build if you have any questions or comments leave them below otherwise we'll see you guys next time on the homestead see you guys bye well you didn't have to take off right into a mud puddle i didn't have a choice you just ducked that being said i can Count. <laughs> well, good day's work. Well, that's it. Good day's work. That's it. <laughs> oh, you still have to do more. We do. I can stand like this. Right. I'm cool with this. Oh, it's that sky. It's the sky, not the guy, right? Right. Nope, then it's just too dark. Alright, Sam's gears are meshing with that. Sam's gears, blah blah blah, turn your base. Sam's gears are meshing with this, and he can probably, probably. Like, like baby's bottom covered in sawdust and treatment chemicals. So we are finished. I can see you. Ah! <laughs> oh, get out of the way. <laughs> I know how I feel. <laughs> In the end, it turned out great. I uh, probably already said that, didn't I? The end. So, guys, we got this go kart from Mimi and Popples, and so it's really cool. So, here's the tiller engine. So, you have to pull this, and it starts. But first, up here, here's a little switch. Like whenever I turn it turn it off, it's like that. Push it down, and watch it. <laughs>